and welcome back to Cracking the Cryptic. Now back to a classic Sudoku puzzle this week and this one's been sent to us by Howard Elder who um, <clears throat> actually says he's been working on it for almost a year. <laughs> it's, it's quite strange to me um, but Howard does say very specifically that he doesn't want to bifurcate, he wants to understand a logical solution. So there's going to be a chance a significant chance that I'm not the right person to be doing this video. But let's see how it goes um, and we'll see what we can come up with. So it's just classic Sudoku to re-emphasize that. Um, there's quite a lot of givens in the grid for it to be a very tough puzzle. I mean quite a lot here but let's see how we do. Now this three is quite useful at the top. Um, that is clearly eliminating these cells and the other three in the grid here is eliminating that one from box two. So we can fill in a three there and a three there. And that gives us an eight, five pair up here. Um, what else is quick here? Not sure. Let's, let's put in some Snyder notation. Um, oh yes, this seven and this seven, as far as they see this, box clearly seven has to be in that cell and we get a three four pair in there um, this becomes a naked single nine eight three five four seven in its column two six in its row um, now some people were asking how I spot naked singles so quickly and I mean I'm sure I don't always but when I do it's often because I'm focusing on what has become quite a restricted column. We've already got effectively six numbers placed if one allows for the pair. So there are only three cells left here, here and here. And they have to be one, two and six. And that's what I'm thinking in my head. Now this one, one has been eliminated. This one, nothing particularly. But here, two and six have been eliminated. So that's a one. And that's all I'm doing. There's no magic. It's just... Um, really just spotting possible eliminations. So that's a one anyway. Um, now up here, one of these is a one, so I'm putting them in the corner. One of these two is an eight. Seven must be obviously not in this column because of that seven. <clears throat> that six is restricting six here to one of those two and therefore to one of those two. Oh, that one has helped with this one and that one into this box down here. Clearly the one must be in this cell. That gives us a one over there. Um, this is quite a powerful, oh, this is a very powerful combination when you get this in a cell because if anything is seeing either those two cells or those two cells, it's really eliminated. And look, it's that six two combination. They can't be in those, so therefore they must be a pair in there. Five, three must be a pair here, and that's resolved by this three up here. Uh, sorry, that's the wrong notation. Three, five, one, six, two. That's really good. Now, the, this can't be a four because of that four. So four must be in one of these cells at the top here. And now four must be in one of those cells. That four, a four up there, means there's a four down here. So this is in fact resolved by the same four up here. I mean, we're getting a lot done. I'm not sure whether this puzzle is gonna turn out to be all that difficult, but let's see. Um, down on this bottom row, where can five go? Well, not here because of that five and not here, clearly. There's a five there, so five goes in this cell. That's putting a five in one of those two. Um, up column seven. Oh no, not all that useful. Four and three must be in these cells. I'm going to put them in the corners, but that they don't form a pair anywhere, obviously, because they could be in any of those three. Um, one must be either here or here in this box because of this one and these two. Maybe we are starting to slow down a bit now. Eight down here must be in one of those two. Um, 
Um, nine in the final column has to be in one of those. And six, because there's a six ruling out those, th sorry, those three cells, and that six and that six, six is limited to those two. Twos over here, because we haven't got much in box four, but we can put a two in one of those two cells. Um, four could be anywhere down there. For some reason, I don't think that feels very helpful to highlight. Don't know, and that's, I think this is probably the sticking point. This is where it, it gets a bit tougher. Oh, f okay, well, four there, four there, and a four in one of these cells means that four in this box is in one of those. But that, again, it doesn't really take us forward very far. What I am gonna do in this box is fill in that two, two is only ruled out of that cell. So two's in one of those three but we don't know which. Um, but it can be quite useful to get all remaining cells kind of filled with their possible numbers. And that's the same up here where five is ruled out of that cell. Here, I'm not gonna bother putting two and seven in those as possibles. But now, what are we gonna find next? Um, difficult at this point I think it's it's really not as straightforward as it's been elsewhere and this is probably where where Howard's got to although on his grid he'd sent us kind of he'd, he'd notated everything down to all candidates like I've done with these boxes um, but I don't think that necessarily helps Ah, oh, look okay I have seen something now um, this column Column two, two, four, six, and one are placed. We've got seven, five, eight, nine, and three to go. And that's quite an interesting bunch of numbers, especially when you consider seven and five. They're both in this box, so those two can't be seven, five. Seven and five are there as well. So this can't be seven and five. So in fact, this must be five or seven. I'm gonna fill them in the center of the cell, because it's an interesting little pair discovery. This one can't be the eight anymore, because that's now been ruled out. And in fact, that means there is only one space for an eight in this box, which is here. That's gonna give us an eight in one of these two, eight in one of those two. Um, but that's... That's not everything, is it? Now, what else can we determine? Oh. Yeah, I think this is something. This must be a five. And why do I say that? Let's just take it out again. <clears throat> okay, the thing to consider is what, what happens if this is a seven? If this is a seven, then this cell, which sees three, nine, six, five, four, two, and one, that would have to be an eight. So we've got seven here, an eight here. What does that do here? Well, this cell in the bottom corner, now it can't be seven or eight. We've got three, nine, six, five, four in the column. We've got one in the row. That would be a two. And now in this row, we've got seven, two. What's this gonna be? Can't be one, six or nine from the row. Can't be four, three, five or eight from the column. It's impossible. So that's a bit of a chain. And, you know, that would tell me when I was solving, and it's, is that a bifurcation? I suppose it is, but it's not a very deep one in a way. Um, hang on a second and let me, let me work on this. I'll, I'll be back with you in a second. 
Okay, hello again. So now what I've discovered is that what this is called is an XYZ wing and it's hinging on this cell here. Um, if you follow our videos, you'll know that Simon's a bit more into the technical stuff than I am. I'm more solving by getting the, sol getting the solution done in whatever way it takes. So in this instance, quite interestingly, you know, I found a, a neat, simple path between four cells, but apparently this is called an XYZ wing and it, it kind of hinges on this cell here because this cell at the start can be any of two, seven or eight. Now, the trouble with that is that this cell can only be seven or eight and this cell over here can only be two or seven at the point we've got to in the puzzle. And the way that they work, given the pos if you see what I'm saying is that this rules out seven here, because that would restrict this one to a two, this one to an eight and make this impossible. And that's the key thing. I don't particularly know why that's called an XYZ wing, but that's what it's called. And it's working on those four cells. So that's kind of what Howard was asking. He's, he says he's looked for X wings and Y wings and XYZ wings, but this is, this is what he didn't find, I think. So, you know, there are different ways to come at it. And if this video proves anything, it's that. Um, but what it all proves is that this cell is not a seven because that would make these three impossible to fill. Therefore, this cell is a five. And that's really very significant. It's going to complete this cell, which is the other of the possibilities. That's going to finish off the box at the top. This one is now disambiguated. Uh, this one must become a six. You know, we. I mean, this has literally filled it in for us, I think. We may still, I suppose, come up against something a little tricky later in the puzzle, but um, this group is now two, seven, eight. This cell is now a naked single. It must be a two. Um, we can get rid of the two possibility there. I mean, that's it's a very neat resolution. Um, and I have to say that my way of kind of just scanning around the grid and working on things doesn't always come to such neat resolutions and sometimes I will start positing chains that are longer than that and rule themselves out and that's bifurcation a lot of you don't like that and I understand it but I'm more interested in solving puzzles quickly so it doesn't bother me at all but there we go nice that we were able to find an explanation of what that's called though today um, and apologies for my not knowing it straight away but there we go that's not going to change anytime soon. So this really, I mean, the rest of this puzzle is just is just finishing off now. Um, if you can't understand why I'm filling in any of the figures in the grid, do just go back and check what the grid state was before I put them in, because it will become fairly clear. That 7, 6 has been resolved by that 6. 5, 8 up there. No, that's not fixed yet. Um, ooh... No, okay, down the right-hand column. This must be a seven, that's naked there. Two, that seven has fixed the seven, eight pair that we were agonizing over for so long. Eight here, that fixes the eight, five pair. That sorts out five, three. Now we can do the middle box and the last two digits. And there we go. Thanks very much, Howard. I mean, it, that is quite an instructive puzzle and Given Howard's struggles, I think probably everybody will find that reasonably difficult. But, you know, whatever, you, whatever your method of finding these cells is significant, I don't think this puzzle is easy. And it'll be very interesting if you contradict that in the comments. We shall see. But thanks, Howard, for sending that. Um, hope that's of interest to you as a solution to a reasonably tough Sudoku. Hope, though, that you don't spend 10 months on these puzzles. <coughs> Um, I don't know what the source of Howard's puzzle was. It just came, he'd, he'd photographed a page called Sudoku Worksheet that he'd, he'd um, partly filled in. So <clears throat> that was the source. And thanks very much for watching. Do subscribe if you can, um, or more importantly, even sponsor us on Patreon if you can. Uh, there's extra content once a month there. And 
do keep watching the videos. Thanks very much for watching this one and hope to see you again soon on Cracking the Cryptic. Bye for now.